Hello everyone, this is Jeff Mamboy and welcome to my lecture series in Integral Calculus. You have already learned how to calculate the area bounded by two curves. However, these curves involved functions in Cartesian coordinates or what we call the rectangular coordinate system. This time, you will learn how to calculate the area bounded by polar curves which are plots of functions in polar coordinates. So here, we have an example of polar curves. We have here a circle, and this one, shaded in green, is a cardioid. In the first two examples, I will solve areas bounded by a single polar curve. And in the last example, we will find the area bounded by two different polar curves. But before I begin, isang shoutout muna ulit sa lahat ng students ko sa Integral Calculus. Study wisely and well, and all the best on your midterm exam next week. Padayon! <laughs> okay, so now, let's begin! This is how a polar coordinate system looks like. Nilagay lang natin dito yung ating x at saka y-axis for reference. However, in polar coordinates, a point P is defined by the ordered pair R theta, where R is the radial distance of the point from the pole. The pole refers to this point. Yan, parang siya yung origin ng Cartesian coordinate system. For example, this is the point. So the distance of this point from the pole is this R. Okay, and that is the radius of an imaginary circle in the coordinate system. Now, this theta is the angle which that radius, kung lalagyan ko dito ng imaginary radius, so this theta is the angle which the radius makes with the positive x-axis. Okay, so that's how you plot a point in polar coordinate system. For example, we are given a polar curve that looks like this, and we want to find its area. To do this, we need to recall a basic concept about circles. So, here is a circle. Now, the portion of a circle that is bounded by an arc and its two radii is called a sector. So, ito yung sector, and this looks like a slice of pizza, di ba? Now, lagyan natin ng label. Diyan tayo mahilig eh, sa mga label. Halimbawa, ito yung radius, no? Ito, radius din to. And here is the angle theta. Now, what is the area of this sector? We know in geometry that the area of a circular sector is equal to 1 half times r squared theta. Where theta is the angle in radians. Okay, ang tawag dyan sa angle na yan, which is bounded by two radii, is called the central angle. Okay? And in calculation, this central angle theta should be in radians. Okay? So again, the area is equal to one half times the square of the radius multiplied by the central angle expressed in radians. And this is the same concept which we will use to find the area of this polar curve. To find the area, we need to divide the entire region into very thin slices of pizza. Ayan. So, gagawa tayo ng maraming maliliit na slices ng pizza pie and one of them looks like this. Ayan. So, di ba para siyang mukhang sector? So, this very thin slice of pizza has a radius r and since this angle is very very small because it's very thin, is a differential element. We represent it as d theta. Now, to find the area of this very thin slice of pizza, which is a differential area element, we will use the same form. So, 1 half times the square of this radius times the angle. However, this angle is a differential element, d theta. And now, from this expression, it's very apparent kung ano na ang gagamitin nating formula sa pagkukumpute ng area ng polar curve. If you want to find the area of this entire region, you need to integrate both sides. And now we will get this expression, which is the formula for finding the area of a polar curve. 
So the area is equal to 1 half times the integral of r squared d theta, which we need to evaluate from theta 1 to theta 2. Dati, sanay tayo sa dx at dy. So kapag dx, ang ating variable ay x, right? And for dy, the variable is y. However, in polar coordinates here, the variable is theta, which means that our limits should be values of theta. That is why here we have theta 1 and here we have theta 2. Now, for the sake of uh, illustration, if you will look at our example at this point, ano ang theta 1? Obviously, here, ang theta 1 natin ay 0. And at this point, the value of theta 2 is 90 degrees. However, again, in calculation, we need to express the angles in radians. Kaya yung 90 degrees gagawin mong pi over 2. Okay? So, you need to be very careful kapag tayo ay nag-a-assign ng limits, dapat ang ilalagay nating values ay values ng angle. Ha? Hindi value ng x, hindi value ng y, at hindi rin value ng r. Rather, value ng angle theta na nagseserve as boundary. Now, para maging malinaw ang lahat ng ito, bibigyan ko kayo ng mga example problem. So, here is the first example. Find the area of the region bounded by the curve r squared equals 16 sine theta. Okay, so paano tayo maghahanap ng area? So, sa simula, kinakailangan mo munang i-plot yung polar curve para malaman mo kung ano ang kanyang itsura. Now, to plot this polar curve, we need to have, of course, a polar coordinate system. Tapos, mag assign tayo ng angles. So, for convenience, ang gamitin nating angles ay 15 degrees and its multiples. So, meron tayong 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90, and so on. Again, multiples of 15 degrees. Okay, sa bawat angle of theta, kukunin mo yung value ng r. So, dito, para makuha natin yung r, of course, r is the square root of 16 sine of theta. Ayan, halimbawa, kapag ang theta natin ay 15 degrees, then, may makukuha tayong r. Anong value ng r kapag ang theta ay 15 degrees? So, computein mo lang yan, and then, pwede mo na siyang i-plot. No? Again, for the, for the point, ang pagpa-plot niyan ay r and then theta. Ano yung nakuha mong value ng r kapag ang angle mo ay 15 degrees? So, that's your r, and of course, theta, which is 15. I-plot mo lang yan. And then, repeat the procedure for another value of theta, this time 30. Kapag ang theta ay 30, ano ang r? Okay, so meron ka ng panibagong point. When theta is 45, what is the value of r? Until you have plenty of points which you can interconnect so that you can plot the graph. So kapag ginawa mo yan from 0 up to 180 degrees, ganito ang makukuha mong plot. So once again, this is the plot of the points mula 0 hanggang 180 degrees. However, yan ay galing dito sa form na ito. R is equal to square root of 16 sine theta. However, we know that this is R squared. And if I get the square root of this, there are actually two values. One is positive and the other being negative. Meron pa tayong R is equal to negative square root of 16 sine of theta. So, yung negative na yan, yung makukuha mong plot dyan is just a reflection of these plots. Dito naman sa ilalim. Okay, so that means makakakuha tayo ng dalawang areas which are symmetrical. So, pag pinag-connect-connect ako ang mga points na ito, Okay, makaka-form ako ng plot na ganito ang itsura. Ayan. Tapos, dahil meron tayong negative values ng R, magkakaroon din tayo dito ng plot sa ilalim. No? This is just a reflection of the plot above the x-axis, meaning that these two areas are symmetrical and that they are the same. Okay? So, ayan. Meron na tayo ngayong plot. At nakikita natin clearly that there are two areas that are separate. So, ang hinahanap natin is yung total area. So, to find the total area, I simply get the area of the plot above and multiply it by 2. Right? Kasi silang dalawa naman ay symmetrical. Okay? For example, ang area na nasa ibabaw, let's call it area 1. Now, the total area is equal to 2 times area 1. Again, because these two are symmetrical. 
Now, to find A1, we need to apply the formula for finding the area of a polar curve. And that is 1 half times the integral of r squared d theta. So, mag-compute na tayo ngayon. The total area that we're looking for is 2 times, ano nga yun yung area ng A1? So, let's use this formula. That's 1 half times the integral of r squared. Itong r squared is 16 times sine of theta and then d theta. Ayan. Makakansel lang itong dalawang to dito. Cancel na siya ngayon. Tapos, lagay natin dito a is equal to integral of 16 sine theta d theta. Now, let's indicate the limits. So, the limits from here to there is obviously, nagsimula tayo sa 0 degrees, right? So, gawin natin radians yan. From 0 to 180 degrees, di ba? Which is pi. Kaya, ang limits natin ay from 0 to pi. Now, let's integrate. Integrating, this will give us 16 multiplied by the integral of sine theta is negative cosine of theta, which we need to evaluate from 0 to pi. So, evaluating that, it's 16 times negative of cosine pi minus negative of cosine 0. So, this is 16 times cosine pi is negative 1. So, negative 1 times negative is positive. So, 1. And then, cosine of 0 is 1. Minus minus is positive. Okay? So, here, I have 16 times 2, which is equal to 32. So, now, the area that we're looking for is 32 square units. Diba? Is that easy? Yes. So, that means itong area 1 ay 16 at itong area 2 ay 16 din. So, pag inad natin silang dalawa, ang makukuha nating sagot is 32 square units. Okay? Is that easy? Yes. Madali lang. Ngayon, gusto nyo ba ng shortcut? Okay. Kung napansin nyo, may pattern yan eh. No? Kapag ka yung given polar curve, sulat natin dito. If the given polar curve has the form r squared is equal to k times the sine of theta. Yan. Ang makukuha nating area ay equal lamang doon sa 2 times the value of k. <laughs> Pansin mo ba yun? Here, our k is 16. No? So, ito yung 16, yung area 1. So, ang gusto natin makuha total area ay dalawa yan. Multiply mo lang ng 2 yung k. Ayan, no? 16 times 2, that is 32. Diba? Amazing grace. <laughs> okay, may isa pa. No? What if itong sign ay naging cosine? Ano kaya ang magiging itsura ng graph? Ah, kapag yung sign ay naging cosine, magiging r squared is equal to k cosine of theta, itong graph natin ngayon dito ay i-rotate mo lang ng 90 degrees to the right. Okay? So, ang itsura niyan, sa halip na yung areas natin ay nasa itaas at nasa baba ng x-axis, ang mangyayari, yung area na mafoform kapag ganito ang polar curve ay nasa kanan at nasa kaliwa naman ng y-axis. Okay? But uh, still, yung itsura nila parehas lang. Nagbago lang ang orientation. That's why this uh, formula is still applicable. Okay? So, if ever you encounter a polar curve whose form looks like this, r squared is equal to k sine theta or r squared equals k cosine theta, the total area is actually twice the value of k. Ganun lang siya kasimple. So, kung isa lang ang ipinapahanap, eh di k. Diba? And the areas are symmetrical. Dalawa yan. Para bagang mga circle yan, no? Dalawang circle na pinagdikit tapos kinompress mo ng konti. <laughs> now, ano ang significance ng polar curve na ito? It has actually a significance in antenna systems. Kapag nag-aral ka ng antenna systems, meron tayong antenna na tinatawag na dipole. Okay? So, at bawat isang antenna ay may radiation pattern na tinatawag. So, kapag ang isang antenna ay dipole, yung radiation pattern niya ganito. Ano bang itsura ng dipole antenna? Yan yung antenna na dalawa ang poles. Yan. Okay? Ito siya. 
So, ito yung antenna element at ito yung isa pang antenna element at ito naman yung uh, papunta sa transmission line mo. So, kapag ka ganyan yung antenna, nandito yung radiation natin. Yan. Ganyan ang itsura ng radiation pattern which looks like this actually. So, yan ang kahalagahan ng polar curve na ito. No? It resembles the shape of the radiation pattern of a dipole antenna. Now, example number two. Find the area of the region bounded by the curve R is equal to 4 sine theta. So, kagaya ng ginawa natin kanina sa simula, magpa-plot ka lang ng mga points using different values of theta. For each value of theta, kukunin mo yung R, ipa-plot mo yung mga points na yon and ititrace mo hanggang sa mabuo mo yung plot ng polar curve. So, pansinin natin, dito wala na yung square ng R. R na lang siya. R is equal to 4 sine of 2 Theta. So, kapag iplinat mo yan, ganito ang makukuha mong polar curve. O, ba? Para siyang flower na may apat na petals. And for that, tinatawag siya na four-lived rose or a four-petal rose. And it's very obvious that we have four regions here na symmetrical. No? Ang apat na regions na ito, magkakamukha sila at pare-parehas yung areas nila for sure. Kaya ang gagawin lang natin is... Hahanapin natin yung area nung isa, imumultiply na lang natin ang apat kasi nga symmetrical yung mga areas na ito. Naiintindihan po ba? So, the total area that we're looking for is equal to 4 times the area of 1. For example, ito yung area 1. At yung area 1 na yan, that is equal to 1 half times the integral of r squared d theta. Diba? Substitute natin. So, yung 4 over 2, magiging 2 na lang siya, times sa integral of, ano yung r natin? r is 4 sine 2 theta. Pag in-square ko yung 4, magiging ano na siya? 16. Tapos, pag in-square ko yung sine 2 theta, magiging sine squared 2 theta. And then, lalagyan ko lang dito ng d theta. Now, we will indicate the limits. Dito, ano ang ating limits? So, kumbaga, sa Cartesian coordinates, para siyang nasa quadrant 1, di ba? So, kung nasa quadrant 1 siya, ang limits natin ay from 0 hanggang dito lang, pi over 2. Now, this becomes 32. 32 times the integral of sine squared to theta times d theta. From 0 to pi over 2. Now, how do we integrate sine squared to theta? We cannot integrate this directly. If you recall our topic in U substitution, paano ba natin in-integrate yung sine squared x? Diba? Gumamit tayo ng trigonometric identity para ma-integrate natin yung sine squared x. If you recall, that identity is 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 2x. So, if this is x, this becomes 2x. Now, what if I have sine squared to theta. What will be the equivalent identity? So, following the same form, 1 half minus 1 half cosine of, kung ito ay x, ito 2x. Ito 2 theta. So, dapat ito ay maging 4 theta. Ito ngayon, yung isa substitute natin sa loob ng integral sign at siya ang ating i-integrate. Okay, integrating a is equal to 32 times the integral of 1 half minus 1 half cosine of 4 theta d theta from 0 to pi over 2. Okay, integrating, anong makukuha natin dyan? Ay, d 32 times 1 half of theta minus, okay, so, when we integrate cosine, that will give us positive sine. Tapos itong 4 magiging divisor. So, 2 times 4 is 8. So, minus 1 8 times sine of 4 theta. Which we will evaluate from 0 to pi over 2. Yan. So, now, evaluating, may makukuha tayo ditong 32 times 1 half of Theta, kapag ang theta, pinalta natin ng pi over 2, this will become pi over 4. Then, if we replace theta with pi over 2, so we will get 
2pi and sine of 2pi is 0. Okay? So, this is pi over 4 minus 0. And then, minus, para naman sa lower limit, kapag itong theta, pinalta natin ng 0, 0 na rin. Tapos, minus, kapag ito, pinalta natin ng 0, sine 0, 0 pa rin. Ayan. So, 0 na siya ngayon. So, we now have 32 times pi over 4. So, 32 over 4 is 8. So, the answer is 8 pi. That's it. Ganun lang kadali. We now have 8 pi square units. That's it. Okay? So, 8 pi yan. Ah. So, kung itatanong mo, ano pala yung area ng bawat isang petal? O, i-divide mo siya ng 4, magiging 2 pi na lang siya. So, bawat isang petal ay 2 pi ang area. Yung 2 pi na yun, i-multiply natin ng 4, magiging 8 pi siya. Okay? O, di ba madali lang? Sir, may alam ka bang shortcut para dyan? Yes! Siyempre naman, alam natin yung mga shortcut na yan. Kapag ka ang polar curve, ganito ang form. R is equal to K sine of 2 theta. Yung makukuha mong area is 1 half K squared pi. Okay? So here, K is 4. 4 squared is 16. 16 over 2 is 8. Kaya ang nakuha natin ay 8 pi. Ayun no, kagaya lang ng ating na-compute. No? So, tandaan ha, for polar curves whose form looks like this, r is equal to k sine 2 theta, yaan ay may area na 1 half k squared pi. Sir, what if yung sine naging cosine? Ah, kapag yung sine naging cosine, ito magro-rotate lang. Magbabago lang yung orientation, pero same pa rin yung itsura niya. Magiging ganito lang siya. O, ba? 4 petal rows pa rin siya. No? And uh, we have 4 equal petals, na ang bawat isang petal again is 2 pi. Kaya kung gusto mong kuhanin yung area ng apat na yan times 4 mo lang, again 8 pi siya. So that's it. So ano ang napansin natin? Kapag ka ito 2 theta, may apat na petals. So what will happen if this becomes uh, 4 theta? Ay di magiging 8 yung petals natin. Kapag ka dito yung number na multiplier ng theta ay even, Yung number of petals ay times 2. So, kung ito ay 2 theta, there will be 4 petals. If this is 4 theta, there will be 8 petals. Naintindihan po ba? And if this is odd, for example, R is equal to K sine of uh, 3 theta. So, tatlong petals yan. Okay? Now, let us solve another example. This time, maghanap tayo ng area bounded by 2 polar curves. So, here's the example. Find the area of the region that is outside r equals 1 and inside r equals 4 cosine 2 theta. So, ano kaya ang itsura ng r equals 2? So, madali lang imagining yan, no? Ang radius daw niya ay constant at equal sa 2. So, anong polar curve yon? It must be a circle kasi constant yung radius niya, di ba? So, meron tayong circle. Dapat daw yung area na hahanapin natin ay nasa labas, outside of the circle, but inside this polar curve. Ano ba yung polar curve na ito? Ayan, no? 4 cosine 2 theta. ba ito yung kagaya nung kanina? No? Kung matatandaan mo, ito yun, no? Ang form niya is K cosine 2 theta. So, ganito yung graph nung example number 3 natin, no? Ang K niya ay 4. Tapos yung sine naging cosine. So, 4 cosine 2 theta. Dapat ganito yung itsura niya. Tapos meron tayong circle na ang radius ay 2. Okay? So, again, ito na yung plot ng ating R2. We have 4 cosine 2 theta. This is a 4 petal rows. And R1 is a circle na ang radius ay 2. So, ito siya ngayon. So, ang hahanapin nating area is yung nasa labas ng circle but inside the petal. Ah, so aling area yon? O halimbawa, itong area na itong ating hahanapin. Yan. Okay? Tapos meron pa rin dito sa kabila, di ba? Let's say for example, ito yung area 1, no? Ilang area 1 meron? Kapag tayo kasi magi-integrate, magsisimula tayo sa 0, right? Yung limits. So wag nating isama yung nasa ilalim. Ang kunin na lang natin is yung nasa ibabaw. So kung yung nasa ibabaw, Ilang area ang imumultiply natin para makuha yung total. ba Walo. Kasi isa, dalawa. Tatlo, apat, lima, anim, pito, walo. So, the total area that we are looking for is equal to 8 times the area of A1. Kung saan ang A1 ay mula lamang dito sa theta is equal to 0. 
Hanggang saan? Hanggang doon, sa intersection ng dalawang polar curves. Saan ba nag-intersect yung circle at saka yung four-leaved rows? Dito sa first quadrant, dito sila nag-intersect, ayan no, sa pi over 6. Okay? So, ang kukunin lang natin na area is yung bounded by 0 and pi over 6 na nasa labas ng circle but nasa loob ng petal. So, ito yon yung region na yun. Tapos, imumultiply natin yan sa walo. Because there are 8 symmetrical regions. So, paano ngayon yan? Eh, yung area natin, may dalawang boundaries. No? Meron tayong R1 dito at meron tayong R2 doon. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin is, kunin natin yung area that is bounded by the petal. Kasi siya yung mas malaki. And then, mamainosan natin yung area bounded by the circle. Kasi dapat ito lang yung matira. ba? Area na nasa loob ng petal, bounded by 0, and pi over 6, minus area naman ng circle that is bounded by the same, 0 and pi over 6. Ah, so pag mamainusin natin yan. So that means that this is equal to 8 times 1 half times the integral of, ano yung unang r? Yung mas malaki. So r2 squared d theta minus 1 half times the integral of r1 squared d Theta. Sir, bakit po ganyan? Kasi po, ang kinahanap nating area is itong shaded na ito. So, nasa loob siya ng petal, kaya ito siya ngayon. Pero tatanggalin natin yung area na nasa loob ng circle. Kasi ang hinahanap is yung area na nasa loob ng petal, pero nasa labas ng circle. Kaya tayo dito ay nag-minus. Okay, so common factor na lang naman itong 1 half, right? And 8 over 2 is equal to 4. So, 4 times, yan. May i-integrate tayong dalawa ngayon. Integral of, ano yung unang R? R2. So, we have 4 times cosine 2 theta. Ah, so ang gawin natin is i-square na natin yan. 16 cosine squared 2 theta d theta. From, of course, yung limits natin is 0 to pi over 6 minus the integral of, okay, so R1 naman. Yung R1 natin is 2. 2 squared is 4. So, 4 d theta. Tapos, yung limits natin same from 0 to pi over 6. Okay, so now let's integrate. Area is equal to 4 times 16. Okay, tapos, eto kasi, pag in-integrate natin, gagamitan ulit natin ng identity. Diba? Parang yung sine squared kanina, magiging plus lang yun. 1 half plus 1 half cosine 4 theta. So, that's integral of 1 half minus, or plus rather, 1 half cosine of 4 theta. D theta. Ayan, from 0 to pi over 6. Minus integral of 4 d theta, kinopya ko lang to from 0 to pi over 6. So now, let's integrate. The area is equal to, we have 4 times, okay, 16. Kinopya ko to. Tapos pag ito in-integrate, ko magiging 1 half of theta. 1 half of theta plus, kasi plus to, tapos magiging 1 eighth. Okay. Integral of cosine is negative sign. So, this should be minus pala. Minus 1 8 sine of 4 theta. Yan. Tapos, minus 4 theta. Yan. Na-evaluate natin lahat yan from 0 to pi over 6. Okay. So, kapag in-evaluate natin ang napakahabang expression na ito, dahil kulang na tayo sa space, di ko na lang ipapakita. So, I think that could serve as your exercise. May makukuha tayong approximately 15.3 square units. So, yan yung makukuha nating sagot. Approximately 15.3 square units. O, ba So, that is how you get the, the area that is bounded by 2 polar curves. Okay, now as an exercise, pwedeng baguhin natin yung problem, revise natin ang konti. What if ang gusto kong malaman is yung area that is inside R1, okay, lagay natin dito, 
Ano naman yung area that is inside R1 and also inside R2? Okay, so that means yung area na common sa R1 at saka sa R2. So halimbawa ito yun, no? lagyan natin dito ng shade. Lagyan natin ng yellow. So ito yung isang area. Tapos walo rin silang ganyan. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, ayan, as an exercise, pwedeng yan naman ang kuhanin mo. Ano ang area na ito? Na nasa loob ng circle and at the same time, also inside the petals. Okay? After mong isolve yun, comment mo sa baba. Para compare natin yung sagot nyo sa ibang mga viewers. Okay? So, uh, if you like this video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You may also share this video to your friends as a way of supporting here on YouTube. Thank you for watching. Bye!